as a preamble to this reading from uh, Mark's Gospel, you should know that Christianity currently has 43,000 denominations worldwide. We are the world's biggest religion with about 2 billion followers, but they're divided into 43,000 groups, all of whom have split off from other groups over some kind of division of belief. Judaism, which was Jesus' religion, has four divisions, that's all. And one of the reasons for this difference is because of the way that we choose to understand the biblical story. Judaism has never held the belief that there's only one right way to interpret scripture. Rather, their approach is to debate all possibilities, all possibilities, in order to deepen their understanding of God. Christianity, for 1700 years, has fought over the right interpretation, and it always leads to greater and greater division. So our reading this morning is the story of a man who comes to Jesus for advice, and he's told he must sell all his possessions and give the money to the poor. And taken literally to see this story as having only one possible meaning isn't very helpful or very good investment advice, and not encouraging to most of us in the rest of the world, especially when you think about Cato in Africa. So as you hear this passage this morning, you're invited to think outside the box and imagine what other interpretations this might have for the people who heard it then, for us now beyond an absolutely literal reading. So I'm reading from Mark 10, verses 17 to 27. As Jesus was heading out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to, etern to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, well, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. And the man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack only one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. And when the man heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. And then Jesus looked around, and I have in my head a sort of a sense of a, oh, will you people never get it? And he said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed by these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who was rich to enter the kingdom. And they were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For humans, it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. And the second reading this morning comes from the poet Mary Oliver. And she challenges the reader by examining herself to pay attention to who we are and how we participate in the world that we live in. It could be a modern day version of Jesus' challenge to the young man in the passage we just read. The poem is called, What I Have Learned So Far, by Mary Oliver. Meditation is old and honorable. So why shouldn't I sit every morning of my life on the hillside, looking 
into a shining world. Because properly attended to, delight as well as havoc is suggestion. Can one be passionate about the just, the ideal, the sublime, the holy, and yet commit no labor to its cause? I don't think so. All summations have a beginning, all effect has a story, all kindness begins with the sown seed. Thought buds towards radiance. The gospel of light is the crossroads of indolence or action. So be ignited or be gone. May these words open us to Spirit's presence. Amen. Amen.